Hello and welcome to today's video, so we should be live now. Unfortunately, you don't get to see my beautiful face in this live stream. There's no option for me to share my screen and my face at the same time. So you're just going to have to stick with my screen today. But what I want to cover today is I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process of the things that I would do if I just discovered that I had histamine intolerance, the actions that I would take, the things that I would do, the, product, the products I would purchase, the testing that I would do, all of like everything so that you have a good sort of like basic game plan of understanding and knowledge and things that you can actually take away go and and do from 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 the end of this video so i'm trying to make this very actionable i'm going to give you lots of i'm so as you can see on my screen right now i've got a bunch of different tabs open at the top I'm going to share all of these tabs with you and give you these links so you can actually go to these web pages yourself take a look at these products take a look at these things and actually do the things so instead of just being stuck in this state of like there's so much information on the internet and you're like I don't know what to do I don't know what I should like what the next step is I'm going to walk you through all of the steps like so you know exactly what you're doing so what I would do first of all if I believed I had histamine intolerance I would do a, I would follow a low histamine diet. I would try eliminating histamine from my food. This can be kind of challenging because it's hard to know what, what is, what foods have histamine in. But I've got a, a list that I want to share with you today. And this is a list that I'm going to be giving away for free. This is a list that we usually sell. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be giving away a, a few free copies. I'm looking to give away 10,000 free copies to celebrate the, the, the one year anniversary of me completely resolving and healing my food intolerances, including histamine intolerance. So I'm going to be giving a copy of this away. We usually sell it for $25 about, and I actually want to give you a free copy. So I'm going to have a link to download the thing after this. So if you're, if you're interested in getting yourself a copy, let me know. So I just want to show you a little bit about this document. So it includes all of this. So we're just talking about histamine today. So there's this little tiny chapter here that we're going to be talking about. But there's all of this other stuff. So if you have intolerances to other types of amines, glutamates, salicylates, oxalates, sulfates, thiols, lectins, FODMAPs, or you're doing a keto or GAPS diet, this is a really, going to be a really helpful document for you. And you're going to see this in a minute. So I'm just going to briefly go through this. So you just see what the what it what it actually looks like. If you come down here, this is why I, this is why I really want to include this document today. So is this? So I would start by following a low histamine diet, and the way that this document is going to be really helpful for you is you can just come to this histamine column here, and you can just scroll down this document, and it shows you all of the different foods that have histamine in and what levels they have. So you can just scroll down in this document, try and find a food that you want to eat. So let's let's choose, for example, let's go for let's go for parsnips. We want to know if they're high in histamine or not. We can just go here, oh they're low. So they're probably okay for a low histamine diet. And what else do we feel like? Oh I feel like having some some bit of butternut squash. Oh yeah that's okay as well. And spinach, oh I can't have spinach at the minute because it's high. So I probably should avoid this. Or if I'm gonna have it I need to have a really really small amount. So you can do this with, this is just vegetables. So you've got fruits, you've got nuts and seeds, seafood, meat and eggs. And as you probably know, if, you're, if you know a little bit about histamine intolerance, you know that meat can be a bit of a challenging thing because it's very variable. It depends on the freshness of the meat. But if you come up here into this section about histamine up here, it's going to tell you all the information that you need about it. So specific type of amine found in foods. Um, there's loads of different information here. There's a bit about DAO and HNMT, which we're going to talk about in these other tabs at the top. So you can you can get a copy of this. You can read this yourself. I don't want to go over this in too much detail because you can just get a copy of this and you can easily read all of this yourself. But what I would do, so this is the first step, is I would try a low histamine diet. And the best way you can do that is by using a is by using a food list. And this one, this is a food list that we created. I'll go down towards the bottom so you can see. We basically combined all of the different food sensitivities lists that we found on the internet. So we've got this one and 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 this one. And this is a really good one. This is Siggy. So this is one of the most um, in-depth uh, histamine um, elimination diet food like documents you can get on the internet. All of the information that's in that document is available in this document as well, alongside all the other information. So this is Siggy reference material. So you, th this is like this is this is good stuff. And all of these different um, references. So these, this is all reference. None of, almost none of this is actually specifically my work. This is just. This is, you can see here it's a bit blank. Herbs and spices. There's almost no internet information about the histamine, glutamate, oxalate, salicylate, sulfate, thiol content. There is some more about these categories over here on the right. But for histamines, that with herbs and spices is a bit challenging because there's not much information out there on the internet. 
So yeah, this is this is fully scientifically referenced. This isn't just me guessing. This is this is referenced. This is pulling from other types of of documents that, that are available on the internet and the references are in, towards the bottom of the document. So you can come down to the bottom, you can click the little links. Like, you want to go to the FODMAP list, you can click this and it'll take you there. So some of these, they don't have references, but I can send you these if, you, if you're interested in them. But you're probably not, you probably just want the food list. So <laughs> I'll leave a link to get this. Let me know if you want to copy. Leave me a comment, let me know that you're interested in getting this. So I'd start with a low histamine diet and that's why I want to give you this document because this is going to give you, this is going to tell you how to do a low histamine diet because you're going to know what you can eat and what you can't because of this column here. So after that, what I would do, the next step is I would move over to trying a, a DAO supplement. So DAO is short for diamine oxidase. This is uh, an enzyme that breaks down histamine in the gut. So this isn't actually fixing the problem. And in a way, doing a low histamine diet isn't really fixing the problem either. But what we're trying to do is get you symptom relief because the symptoms of histamine intolerance can be absolutely horrible. They can be almost unbearable from suicidal depression to like itchy skin and just you just feel really uncomfortable in your body. Insomnia, some of the, some of the symptoms here are, are some of the worst symptoms of any kind of health condition that you can experience. So by doing a low histamine diet and trying to take some DAO, we can help your body a little bit and give it a little bit of space so that you don't feel so bad and we improve your quality of life a little bit, and this may increase your tolerance of foods somewhat. So this isn't really fixing the problem, it's more about improving quality of life, but I think quality of life is probably the most important thing that we have on Earth, so I think it is, is really important. So I'd be looking at using this short term, just like maybe buy one and see if it makes a difference. This, personally, this didn't make any difference for me. It didn't really help me because a lot of the histamine was actually being produced in my own digestive system. So even when I was eating a low histamine diet, I was still producing histamine from the food that I was eating and from the bacteria in my gut, which we're going to come on to in a minute. So for that reason, it didn't really help me, but it does help some people and it, and it makes it so that some people can tolerate some high histamine foods if they take DAO with it. And if that works for you, then use that. That's a really, a really cool thing to be able to do, especially if it enables you to be able to eat other foods that can help you in the healing process, like, like organ meats, like liver or like broth, bone broth. Some people don't tolerate them, but they do if they take a DAO with them, and this can be really helpful. So this is just one example. You don't have to use this, this supplement. I just use it because I know this is a good brand. Um, so all you're looking for is if you go into the ingredients section, you basically just want DAO, which is this one here. I think, you should, yeah, so here, DAO, diamine oxidase. So this is the enzyme that you're looking for, diamine oxidase. So you, can, you don't have to use this supplement, you can use anything, but the active ingredient is DAO, diamine oxidase. Second, I will be looking at using a digestive enzyme. I really like Lipogold. If you've watched my stuff before, you probably already know that. The reason I like Lipogold is it's pretty safe to use long term because it only contains enzymes that we produce from our own pancreas. So it's not giving us things like cellulase, which are going to break down fibers that we actually want to be feeding the, the, the microflora. So in that case, it's more, it's kind of like safer to, to use on a, on a more long term basis if you need it. But the thing that, I'm re that we're really looking at here is amylase. So if I just pop this up and do a little zoom in. So you've got here amylase, TheraBlend, this one in the middle. So again, you don't have to use this supplement. However you do it is not important. The, the point that I want to make here with amylase is amylase can, activate as, can act as a mast cell stabilizer inside the body. So one reason that we can have histamine intolerant symptoms is our mast cells are being triggered by some kind of environmental toxicity or some autoimmune reaction or something. Something is irritating our immune system and it causes our mast cells to become unstabilized. And when they become unstabilized, they release histamine, and that can cause the symptoms of histamine intolerance. And if you have an amylase deficiency, it's gonna make it a million times worse. So making sure that we have enough amylase can be really helpful there, but it, even more than that, it can actually act as a mast cell stabilizer. So the amylase can stop these mast cells from getting, so, getting triggered so easily and releasing all of the histamine, giving you all of their symptoms. Plus, making sure that we break down, digest, and absorb our food properly is really helpful because it's going to mean if we do have any organisms present in the digestive system, they're not going to be eating the food that we're not able to digest and producing histamine as a byproduct. So it's kind of like a, a double whammy. It's, it's really overall just a, a, a pretty helpful thing to do. So for that reason, I would suggest a digestive enzyme. I like Lipogol. Again, you don't have to use it. 
but it's really amylase that we're looking at here in the, in the context of histamine intolerance. Over here, we're going to look at a probiotic. So this is, this is mostly about symptom relief, but it is also working to help fix the problem. This one is all about fixing the problem. So in a case where we have histamine intolerance, the gut is damaged and it isn't producing the DAO that, that it needs to be able to produce to break down the histamine that we're eating in the foods or the histamine that's being produced in our own gut. The repair of your, mic of your, of your lining, of your gut, is, is orchestrated by your microflora. So if you're missing the right types of organisms in your gut, you, you literally just simply cannot repair your gut. It's just not possible. And this is a really nice probiotic to start with because it's, it, so it looks a bit expensive, okay? So I would suggest you probably start with the 100 grams. So it's $175. It looks a bit expensive. However, it's not. So if, you, if you'll take a look at the dosage of this, this is 250 billion CFUs per gram. If you compare the total cost, the, the total CFU amount in a bottle, and then divide it by the cost, it's actually one of the cheapest probiotics that you'll find on the internet. And the reason that it's so expensive is they sell it in a, they sell a lot of it at once because it's a very high dose. And to really resolve these problems, to fix a, a gut dysbiosis that is so severe that it's causing histamine intolerance, you're going to need to use a high strength probiotic. Taking one of those cheapy little ones that you buy at the health food store that's got like two strains of lactobacillus, like it's not going to cut it. You know, we, we need to be using a high dose if you're actually going to try and resolve a, a problem like this. And this one is very effective. It's D-lactate free, which means if you have like brain fog or chronic fatigue syndrome or uh, poor post-exercise recovery, it's going to be more well tolerated. This is the one that is actually recommended for, for children with autism as well. I think it mentions that here, yeah, probiotics and autism. This is the the most well-tolerated probiotic that I have used myself and, and with my clients. It's the place I start almost everybody because it's just, it sets the gut in a good place to get started. I've got countless people that have reached out to me and said, I've done this probiotic, it's changed my life, I can poo again, I'm not constipated, it's improved my depression, like thing, everything's starting to go, go better again. So this is a really awesome probiotic. And I just wanna say as well, none of the links I provide today are gonna to be affiliate links. So. If I could, like if I could make money with you buying these products, I would totally do it, but I can't. Uh, they don't offer affiliate programs. So if I could, I totally would, but I can't. So I'm not even financially incentivized to be advertising these things. This is just what I would do. This is what I would personally do. So you're gonna have to start on a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. So this usually comes with two spoons, as you'll see here, there's like a big one and a little one. I think usually a good place to start is one eighth to one sixteenth of this little tiny, tiny scoop. So it's like a, an, an insignificantly tiny, minuscule amount. And we want to build up really, really slowly. So these are the strains that are in this probiotic. None of these produce histamine. These are all histamine degrading strains. So they actually break down more histamine than they produce. So this can provide some symptom relief. But what I find usually happens is this causes a histamine reaction. And this isn't because this contains histamine, it's because this, these probiotics are going to fight with, the, with the, the microbes in your gut that are causing your histamine intolerance. So they're gonna be producing histamine in reaction to you taking these probiotics. And that's gonna make you not wanna take them, but what it means is we need to slow down. We need to make sure that you're taking it at a small enough dose that it doesn't cause a significant reaction, but that we're slowly working on, on increasing your dosage over time and shifting the, the composition of your, of your microflora. It's a process, it takes time, just take it slowly. And as you can see, it's extremely hypoallergenic. It has nothing in it, no cellulose, no additives. I know some people will have sensitivities, especially if you have histamine intolerance, you probably have other types of food sensitivities as well. This powder is, it has nothing in it. It's just probiotics. There's no, as you can see, there's none of these allergens. There's no fiber. There's no prebiotics. There's nothing. It's like the most clean probiotic that you'll ever find. And that is another reason that I really love them. They're amazing. Awesome probiotics. I'll leave a link to this. Or you can just go on Google and type custom probiotics. And you'll probably want to start with a delactate free probiotic powder. Best place to start. So then, we would move over here. So this might be a bit confusing, or maybe it, maybe it isn't, but I would start to do some research on something called HNMT, histamine and methyltransferase. And I would look at developing, 
I would look at taking a, a genetic test and discovering if you have a mutation in your H HNMT pathways. And if you do, you, it's probably going to be more important for you to start looking into your methylation cycles. Like, take a look and see if you've got MTHFR or you've got any other types of uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms that might be might be affecting you and make sure that you're supplementing appropriately so that is like such a complicated thing it's so difficult to understand that even 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 for me as an individual with my methylation problems I struggle to understand it you know it's such a complex system of different interconnected enzymes and pathways and it, it is it is a little bit overwhelming it can be a bit overwhelming so I would encourage you to just start doing your own research into this and I would be looking at starting with, so you're going to, obviously you're going to need to take a test first. So if you come over here, we've got 23 and me. So this is, this is what the way that I would do it. This is the way I actually did it and this is what I would suggest you do as well. So you can take this test. It's pretty cheap. It's about $100. You don't need to buy the complicated one. You just need to buy the basic one. So when you come in here and you're going to buy it, they're going to probably try and sell you. So this is the one you want, Ancestry and Traits. Usually they try and sell you one, like a health one. Like you don't need the health one. You just need ancestry and traits. Because what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do that. We're going to do this test. They're going to send you out the the test kit. And what you're going to do is that it's going to be a little vial, and you're just going to basically spit into the vial like 20 times, fill it up until it reaches the level, and then you send it back. And what they do is they take some of the DNA from the the epithelial cells that fell off in your mouth while you were salivating and they sequence your genome and they find your genetic code and then they're going to send you a copy of that as a as like a text file and what we're going to do is we're going to take that text file and we're going to go into this software over here so this is called geneticgenie.org and what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to do the methylation panel and we're going to do the detox panel so we're going to go in here you just click it and then you you upload the file here you don't have to pay you can choose the donation as zero if you don't want so you can just basically set that as nothing and you won't, so you can go custom and then put zero. You, you don't have to pay anything. It's, it's tricky because obviously they want you to donate, but you don't have to donate anything. So you put your stuff in here, upload it, and it will create a little, um, a little report for you. And then you also want to do the detox panel as well. So you can do it with both of these. And it's going to give you an idea as to whether you have any, any uh, genetic predispositions to have problems with processing histamine through your HNMT pathway. So this is like the backup pathway. This isn't the, the the primary pathway that's the most important. It's more about the DAO, but we're going to be fixing that by, by, by doing this and by following a low histamine diet temporarily and making sure that we're digesting the food properly. There's another little thing that I wanted to show you here. So I don't have the tab open. Oh, it's here. So this is, we haven't released this yet, but this is, this is, this is something that's really important. This is a uh, something that we're working on, on currently. So we're building a gut health bundle, and so you've got the two pathways that 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 work together to degrade histamine in your in your body. I think they're actually in here. Let me just check. I just want to. I, I know what they are. I just want to see if they're here because it's cool for you to be able to read it as well. So we've got here. We've got the methylation form. So we've got methylation via histamine and methyltransferase. So this is like the backup pathway that does maybe 20% of your, of your histamine or less. It's not really, it's not really a heavy pathway. It's kind of like the backup pathway for any excess that comes through the gut, or it's the pathway that we use to process histamine that's produced endogenously inside our body. Like, so we do produce histamine in our brain and as a neurotransmitter, and we need to break that down as well. So this is kind of like, this is kind of like the one that's not supposed to do very much work. It's like 20%. But the one that's supposed to do the most work is here. Oxidative deamination via diamine oxidase. Just here. And this happens in your gut. And if your gut isn't functioning properly, like if you have leaky gut, if you have uh, intestinal permeability, if you've got microflora imbalances, this is like 80 to 85% of where your histamine is degraded. And fixing your gut is the most important thing. And... I'd take a look at this. So this is the gut health bundle we're working on. This isn't available currently. We're working on it. It's going to be out very soon. But it includes uh, a couple of really, really valuable resources. I don't want to show you it. It isn't finished yet. So it's still a, a work in progress. But this is going to include the food sensitivities list. But we're, as I said, I'm going to be giving this away. So if you're interested in getting yourself a free copy of this, make sure you, you, you let me know and I'll get you a free copy. 
But it's also, it also includes two other other courses. One of them is about how to build a diet around food sensitivities. And the other is the five pillars to heal your gut. So we can actually heal the gut. And as you heal the gut and you rebalance the microflora, histamine intolerance will go away. It's, 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 it's pretty much just science, you know? If you understand how histamine intolerance is, how it presents, how, how the onset manifests, you can understand that by, by fixing the damage that's occurring in the gut, so by restoring DAO production inside the digestive system, the histamine tolerance goes away. So this is totally optional, you know, but if I, if I was where I was when I had histamine intolerance, I wish I had this information in such a place. And that's what made me create the bundle. Because when I was struggling with histamine intolerance, like, and you, you might think like, oh, it's really confusing. Like you go on the internet and there's not that much information about histamine intolerance. Like, can you imagine what it was like five or six years ago when I, when I was really struggling with it? Like it was really hard to find the information and pull things together and to have things actually make sense in a way where I could recover from it. But now, like information's everywhere. I'm, I'm telling you, you don't need to buy this course. The information is available in, on the internet for free. But if you wanna have to go and find all of that information by yourself, that's gonna take a lot of time and effort and you're not gonna know if it's the right stuff. Whereas I'm telling you, implementing what is in this course is what helped me resolve my histamine intolerance. So it's there, it's an option if you want it, and I'll be including it as a, as a link below so you can work on healing your gut. Because healing histamine intolerance comes after you do a lot of gut healing. It's like, it's sequential. As the gut heals, histamine intolerance will resolve itself. So I'm gonna just be sliding down on here so you can take another look at this document. Let me know if you wanna get a copy of this for free. I am also gonna just mention the emotional root cause because this is also really important. So the function of histamine in the body is to, Basically, it's part of the immune system and it helps us to eliminate toxicity. It's a cleaning molecule, it's a cleansing molecule. It helps in detoxification. So, root cause I'm always thinking with histamine intolerance is, where's the toxicity? Where are we being exposed to toxicity? This is more appropriate in the case of mast cell activation syndrome because the mast cells, the immune cells, they're activating, they're, they're causing a reaction to, to something. They're not, they're not stupid, they don't just activate for no reason. They're being triggered by something, they're activating for a reason. And we need to figure out what that is. And more often than not, it's toxicity. So this can look like, on a physical level, this can look like um, increased gut permeability, so you've got toxins leaking in from the gut, that can activate mast cells. This can be chemical toxicity, this can be chlorine in your tap water, this can be um, mold and mycotoxins, this can be different metals, this can be lots of different types of physical toxicity. But this can also be emotional toxicity as well. So if you're in an abusive relationship or if you have self-sabotaging patterns or you have any kind of emotional trauma, you can have histamine intolerance as a physiological response to an emotional problem. And in my case, this was true. And I only got so far with resolving my histamine intolerance by doing the physical changes alone. So you have to do all of this stuff first, you know? Like try the DAO, take the digestive enzymes, do, use the probiotic, look at your methylation status, fix your gut and improve DAO function in your, in your digestive system. Do all of these things. But if you do all of these things and you still have problems, you still have symptoms, it doesn't mean that this hasn't been progress. It is, it is progress, but then we need to go to the next level. And this is looking at the mental and emotional side of, of, this, of this health problem, because there is a mental and emotional health so problem side of this problem. I, I know it because I've been through it myself, I've experienced it, and I know that if I didn't do the work on the emotional side, I would still have histamine intolerance today. But I've been working on that stuff, and the results are evident, you know? I don't have histamine intolerance. I can eat pizza, I can eat cheese, I can, I can literally eat whatever I want. And I wouldn't have got there if I didn't do all of this stuff first, but then if I also didn't, didn't follow it up with the emotional side of things as well. So it's really important that you look at all of the aspects of, of healing. Healing, we're moving into a new level of holistic understanding of health. So holistic 1.0 is that the organs in the body all work together. You know, the brain works with the pancreas, works with the spleen, works with the liver, works with the stomach. 
But holistic 2.0 is understanding that the body works with the mind, works with the emotions, and that for every physical health problem, there's a mental and emotional problem too. And if we want to find true and lasting healing from the chronic health problems that we have, we have to cover all of these aspects. So this is a really good place for you to start. This is where I would start if, if I was right at the beginning of my journey again. But I'm not, I'm towards the end. So I'm quite fortunate. But I want to use the fortune, the, the information that I've gathered, the wisdom, all of the knowledge that I've accumulated and I wanted to share it with you. So if I had histamine intolerance, if I just got diagnosed with it or if I just became aware of it and thought it was something that I had, you now have all of the steps that I would have taken, that I would have followed to resolve my, resolve my histamine intolerance. I hope you found this video to be really helpful. And if you have any questions, please make sure you, you leave them below and let me know. I know you don't have any of the links available yet. I'll make sure I add all of the links of all of the pages that we covered at the end of the video. Hope this has been really helpful and I'll talk to you soon.